This is a great day for Oregon sports in Eugene. From baseball through softball and to track and field, we have a lot to catch you up on, so let's get started. The 31st ranked Oregon Ducks softball team plays the Boston University Terriers today in the NCAA Regional Tournament in Norman, Oklahoma. The Ducks had an early exit from the Pac-12 tournament last week. They gave up four runs in the top of the seventh inning to squander a one-run lead and lose to the Utah Utes. The Terriers had a 52-win season and went undefeated in conference play in the Patriot League. Oregon player Ariel Carlson spoke about the team's approach to the postseason. I personally love postseason because I think we just get to leave everything that happened in the regular season in the past and we just get to play very present and um, just play for each other and play for the people around you. Um, so I think that's just going to be the message to the team going forward is just to not take a moment for granted because um, we're fighting for our season. The games begins today at 2.30 p.m. Pacific Time. The OSAA High School Track and Field State Championships are taking place this weekend in Hayward Field. The 1A, 2A, and 3A events started yesterday and are going through today. And the 4A, 5A, and 6A events will be tomorrow and Sunday. OSAA has released the leaderboards of yesterday's boys' events. The 1A leader is Joseph High School with 18 points. The 2A leader is East Lynn Christian with 26, and the 3A leader is Seos Law with 28. More results will be released over the weekend. The Oregon Ducks baseball team is playing the Washington State Cougars in a series of major postseason implications. The Ducks won the opener yesterday 9-2 thanks to efficient scoring and a great outing from starter R.J. Gordon. Oregon was firing on all cylinders from the start. Red fielder Mason Neville hit a two-run home run in the bottom of the first inning to give the hosts a lead they would hold for the whole game. The Cougars got a run back in the top of the second through an RBI single by catcher Jacob Morrow, but in the bottom of the same frame, Neville hit a bomb to center field to increase Oregon's lead by three. A wild pitch in the third inning by Washington State starter Grant Taylor scored Maddox Maloney, and no more runs were scored until the sixth inning. In the top, Joey Kramer hit a solo home run for the Cougars, and in the bottom, Ducks first baseman Jacob Walsh replied with a three-run RBI double to set the final score. Oregon head coach Mark Wisikowski spoke about the series. If things go in our direction, then we can finish in second place, and that's what we want to do. We, we'd want to finish in first place. We can't do that. We can only finish in second place, potentially, and that means we need to take care of our business for the next two nights. We did tonight. That's one step, so happy about that, and we've got more work to do. The Ducks are in third place in the Pac-12 standings in a close battle with the Oregon State Beavers and Utah Utes. This series is the last one of the regular season for the team, but it's special for another reason. These last three games are the final Pac-12 regular season contest for any Oregon Ducks team before the university officially joins the Big Ten Conference on August 2nd of this year. Oregon pitcher RJ Gordon reflected on the clubhouse attitude to the change. To be honest, we don't really talk about it much um, just because we're in the moment and we're just playing games, you know. Um, I don't even know what number of game we're at, but it's, you know, we're deep in the season, so it's not something we think about. I think it's more, um, you know, after the year when there is no Pac-12, then it's going to be like, man, this is weird. But right now, it's not even a thought for us. The second game of the series is today at 6 p.m. Pacific time in PK Park. Up next, Jack MacArthur will tell you more about a historic annual festival in Eugene that's happening this week. More after this break.